All right, I think it's time we should start. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my session. I hope everyone had a nice lunch. Uh, we should be talking about uh, events, which is necessarily the object-oriented way of doing the same thing that we were able to do with hooks earlier. So let me ask a question. How many of you have actually used hooks before? Great. Um, and how many of you have uh, used events now? Cool. So those of you who have used events, uh, this should be a pretty basic stuff for you. Uh, you may feel a little bored, so I'm sorry for that. I've tried to keep this uh, very basic. Uh, but then uh, there is some, uh, you know, I have tried to go a bit deeper into s things on the way. So you should, there should be stuff that is, I guess, new for you too as well. So as we know from uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, we have moved from uh, you know hooks to events and other ways of extending our applications or you know letting others extend our applications. So we should be looking into that aspect of it. Uh, before moving further, uh, let me give a brief, brief uh, introduction about myself. So my name is Nida Ismail Shah. I work for Acquia. Uh, it's been two years that I've been working for Acquia. Uh, prior to this, I wasn't working anywhere, so I s joined Acquia straight from my college. Uh, you can find me on my Twitter and uh, on Dotto as well. I sometimes blog as well, so you can check that out as well. I come from a beautiful place called Kashmir. It's in uh, South Asia, north of India, so we have a little, uh, you know, small Drupal community there as well. I encourage you to visit us, read about Kashmir and, you know, eventually visit us. So uh, the overview of what I'm going to talk about today would be, uh, we'd be basically looking about two things. One is the Symphony way of uh, doing events. Uh, we'll be looking into Symphony event dispatcher component. And then we'll move to, uh, you know, how we can implement and how we can use events in Drupal 8 as well. Uh, consequently, we'll be also looking at how we can install uh, the Symphony Event Dispatcher component in your standalone application, irrespective of Drupal. We'll also look into how you can create and dispatch events there, and then subscribe or listen to your events that you have created or that are that or have been created by other developers. Same things we'd be looking into. You know, we'll be looking into when uh, you know same things. How same things can be done in Drupal 8 as well. So the intent, uh, you know, let's uh, look about the intent or the purpose of having events or having hooks in our application. So this is a commit message that Dries first wrote when he introduced the hook system. So the basic idea is to be able to, you know, r run certain, you know, a random amount of code, a random code at a random point in your program. So as your program progresses, as your application progresses through its life cycle, you s define certain moments, you define certain points where you want other developers, other people to, you know, hook into your application, uh, hook into your application and alter something or do so about things about, you know, some things in your application, eventually, you know, extending your application to other functionalities as well. So that's the main interest. Earlier in Drupal 7, how we, uh, you know, where that happened was hooks. Th those hooks were defined by a fixed interface, as you might know, which was true for each hook as well. Event dispatcher component provides the same thing. It basically allows your application, you know, different components in your application to interact with each other, decoupled, you know, interact with each other in a decoupled way. It doesn't, you know, it basically forces your application to interact, to components of your application to interact with each other in a loosely coupled way. So uh, what is an event? Uh, does anyone have a formal definition of an event? <laughs> Great, so events. <laughs> event would be the same uh, random point in your program where you want other developers to run certain code. So it is an action that can be, you know, that is represented by an uh, by a software, and that can be handled by a software as well. 
so your action how you can handle how you can represent it by a software would be defining or dispatching an event at that point and how you can uh, handle it with software is to is to define a listener or a subscriber that can listen to your event and as a result of uh, you know consequently when you implement events when you impl have hook system in your place in your application so you what you achieve is your application becomes extensible so other developers other people are able to extend your application are able to hook into your application and perform there and extend your uh, you know application to uh, design custom functionalities and your application becomes modular as well so we know that drupal 7 or drupal you know in itself is a modular application or a modular software but the, with the introduction of with these new advancements in drupal 8 for example introduction of different symphony components your drupal itself has become you know more modular in a way that modules itself modules in themselves are modular so you have different components in your modules which was not possible earlier with drupal 7 and as a result you have a highly maintainable code and you have a better developer experience as well so let's talk a little bit about the background of you know what we are going to uh, try to you know talk about today The whole thing is about extensibility. So you want to make your applications extensible. In Drupal 7, you had, you know, what, whatever you had to do, you had to do it with hooks. And then with the introduction of Drupal 8, we became a little happier. We had many ways of doing the same thing. We had many ways of, you know, allowing our applications to be extendable. Uh, we have plugins, we have tag services, we have events, and then we have hooks as well so if you want your you know if you want your extensibility if you want your extension to have the admins ui support to have multiple instances to use configuration so you should be using plugins if you want a simple extension you should be using tag services but if you want to alter something or if you want to react to something that's happening already you may want to you know you may want to use events for that and this is only when you're writing your own module but then when you are extending someone else's code it really uh, you know you really don't have a choice you have to do whatever you know you have to follow the way they have exposed their application if they have exposed a hook you have to alter you have to implement that hook if they have triggered an event at that point of time you have to subscribe to that event so you can uh, by the way you can use hooks you can expose hooks in Drupal 8 as well. I don't know why you would do that, but then you can. Uh, now let's talk about Symphony Event Dispatcher component, how you can you know, basically use, uh, install, and use this component in your application. Installing is simple. You can uh, require it with Composer, or you can simply clone it uh, from GitHub. And you should be, you know, then require uh, you know, the autoloader, and then you should be good to go. There are three things to, you know, using event dispatcher component in your application. One is the event. The event is in itself represents the state of your application. You know, it represents that point where in you want to, when you want to, you know, let other people do something about your application or extend your application. You may want to, uh, you know, pass in your uh, state information. You know, you have an object that represents your application at a certain point of time. It has certain properties. Those properties have values. You may want to pass in those values to your event object so that they become available to the listeners for al any alteration they might want to make. And then you have a dispatcher that has the sole responsibility of dispatching your events and then eventually notifying all the subscribers or all the listeners that this event has occurred and then actually calling those subscribers and listeners. A subscriber is necessarily, you know, that chunk of code that you want to run when, at, when a particular event has occurred. Event dispatcher component uh, basically uh, implements uh, two patterns, pub sub pattern and mediator pattern. 
does anyone know what pub sub pattern is so basically it's a messaging pattern wherein it exemplifies the decoupling of two components in this pattern what happens is uh, a subscriber a publisher publishes its message without the knowledge of what subscribers are going to listen to its message and a subscriber to a message you know expresses interest in listening to a message without the knowledge of where the where the message is com coming from same thing is happening with event dispatcher component as well a listener doesn't have a, a listener doesn't necessarily need to have the you know information of what event the information what event is you know where the event is coming from so or event doesn't have the responsibility of explicitly calling the listener event is being fired from a dispatcher centralized dispatcher component and listener is being called by the dispatcher component the listener and the event are necessarily decoupled same thing happens with mediator pattern as well mediator pattern design uh, designates a mediate intermediary who is responsible for you know the communication between two different components the two different components in your application don't necessarily have to interact with each other uh, an ideal example of this would be an you know uh, a runway of an uh, airport so two planes a plane landing and a plane taking off they don't necessarily have to con contact you know uh, uh, each other as to when uh, is the right time for one one to take off and the other to uh, land they both contact with the centralized object here representing you know in an air airport it will be a control room so they both have the job to control uh, contact the control room and not with each other uh workflow uh, of uh, you know using this event dispatcher component in your application would be uh, again you have a listener object <coughs> listener you have a listener object that tells the dispatcher object as to what events it wants to listen to and what methods should be called when those events when those events occur and then at some point of time when that point reaches uh, you tell symphony to dispatch that event and then it is the job of the dispatcher component to uh, to actually call those to actually call those methods on subscribers or listeners and your event is and you have your event uh, object containing all the information regarding the state of your application so as i said we have three components the dispatcher component uh, the event object and the subscriber or listener we uh, have been using these terms the subscriber and the listener indistinctly so we'd be looking at how these are different there are minor differences we'd be also looking into that as well so in your application uh, to use uh, the event dispatcher component you have to instantiate the uh, event dispatcher you get the dispatcher object and then uh, you know your dispatcher object you call a method dispatch on your dispatcher object to dispatch any event a uh, dispatch method takes in as argument uh, two things one it can take in as a uh, argument as a constant that would represent your event or it can also be a string name so the constant would also you know be representing the same string name it would be a unique string representing your event it also takes in as an argument your event object the event object you uh, Uh, would have to you know if you want uh, if you want other people to alter something in your application you might want to pass in that information into your event object like i have you know i have a scenario here we have uh, uh, suppose an e-commerce portal we have an order object we want to we want other people to alter we create an event and we pass in that order object as an argument to our event and then we pass in that event object as an argument to our dispatcher and it dispatches the event so that is the whole process of creating an event and dispatching the uh, dispatching that particular event let's look at the event object what event object looks like so event object is basically a uh, you know extends the generic event object by symphony so you have your you can have custom methods for you know uh, you can have getters and setters for your information or that represent the state of your application and you basically uh, you know there is nothing there's a constant that represents your application and it's a simple sparse uh, class that is you know available to developers 
to you know design apis around that the base event class has nothing so it has only uh, two methods uh, and a variable so uh, it also has two methods uh, which are basically you know you can uh, get the status of the event status of the propagation of the event and you can uh, also force an event to uh, be stopped which was not possible with drupal 7 when you were you could you could not stop the execution of an event now here you can uh, you know in your application you can stop actually stop the execution of an event the base event classes you know uh, it has been intentionally kept as sparse so as to allow people to design apis around that so you can have custom APIs, uh, you know, around your uh, information, whatever information you want to expose to other people in your application, you can design APIs around that. Now, uh, we have a dispatcher object that has dispatched our custom event object. So we have, uh, we have reached a point in your application, in our application, wherein we have an event object representing the state of our application and we have told this, the dispatcher component to dispatch our event and then now we'd look into how we can subscribe to that event so our subscriber would be uh, would need to implement the event subscriber interface and as a result we'd be forced to uh, define a method get subscribed event so this uh, get subscribed event method re basically returns all the information about what events our uh, subscriber is implementing what uh, sorry subscribing to what if what all events are subscriber is subscribing to or listening to so basically you would return an array of either you know uh, events and the corresponding methods that would get called there are multiple things that you can return here one you can only return uh, an array keyed by uh, your event name uh, the constant or string both you can use here and you can also you know uh, like i have done here you can also uh, return it with a simple method name which would be having a default priority of zero or you can specify a priority as well you can uh, you can subscribe to multiple events in the same subscriber and you can have multiple methods getting called for a single event as well on multiple priorities different priorities so the higher the priority here the first year subscriber would get uh, called and then obviously you would have implementations of your you know subscriber methods and then your uh, subscriber method each subscriber method would get the same event object as an argument that we passed into the dispatch method of the dispatcher object now we have the listener we uh, this was a subscriber sorry this was a subscriber and now we have the listener so listener is a simple class which has a simple method and that's all and you are doing something whatever you want to do with the event object that you receive as an argument to that method so uh, this is the basic difference between a listener and a subscriber a subscriber specifically uh, provides the information as to you know what events it's listening to which is uh, not the case with a listener and a listener does not have an have the information of what events it's listening to so whenever you add those subscribers or listeners to the dispatcher you would not need to provide the information of what uh, events your subscriber is listening to when you're registering your uh, subscriber with the dispatcher but when you're registering your listener with the dispatcher you would need to explicitly pass in the information of what events it's listening to and uh, what methods should get called when those events uh, occur and with what priorities like we have like we see here uh, i have instantiated the same subscriber and i simply add subs do a column method add subscriber on the dispatcher and pass in the simple uh, subscriber object which is not the case with a uh, listener I have to explicitly pass in the information of what event it is listening to and I have to pass in the listener object with the method name that uh, you know should get called when this particular event uh, occurs. I also would need to pass in the uh, you know uh, priority as well here but if you don't uh, default of zero would be taken 
we this uh, method name is also optional here so uh, if you don't pass in the method name uh, it would uh, call the method which has a name with prepended uh, you know uh, with on prepended to the event name so for example if you are you know if you want your subscriber to uh, listen to an event called foo action and you don't want to pass in the uh, method name here so an uh, on foo action method if there is an on foo action method it would get called automatically so the rest of the process remains same now this is one way of registering your uh, subscribers and listeners to your event dispatcher component other ways can be uh, you can use uh, if you are using container aware event dispatcher which means uh, you have your container available within your event dispatcher you can also and you are using dependency injection component as well you can uh, use register listener pass to you know uh, basically defining your listeners and subscribers as tagged services and then your uh, listeners and subscribers would be lazy loaded into your container so whenever an event is fired so uh, how that would uh, how you would do that you would define your listener and your subscriber and or your subscriber as a service in services.yml file you would uh, given the uh, class name for that and you would define it with a tag uh, whatever tag you want to choose kernel event listener is the tag that symphony uses symphony has already written a, a register listener pass uh, for these arguments for these tags so uh, you already have a register listener pass uh, available in uh, you know the http kernel component of symphony so you whenever you tag a service with kernel event listener it is defined as a uh, listener to your you know it is available to you as a listener and if you tag it with a subscriber kernel event subscriber it is available to you as a subscriber same process has been followed in drupal 8 as well that is why we uh, are required to you know define our subscribers as services so there is one thing to note here uh, similarly as we have you know seen earlier as well in the process of uh, registering your uh, listeners and subscribers when you are defining your subscriber as a service you do not need to explicitly uh, you know provide the information of what event it is listening to and what you know method should get called but in the case of uh, uh, listeners you would need to pass in that information explicitly so we have seen these differences between subscribers and listeners the only difference between subscriber and a listener is that a subscriber does not sorry a listener does not have the information of what events it's listening to you would need to pass in that information at the point of you know service definition when you are defining your uh, event listener as a service or when you are uh, adding your listener to the uh, dispatcher you would need to explicitly pass in that information so that is the basic uh, you know uh, difference between the the listener and the subscriber i have written a blog post around the same thing you can check that as a, check that out as well so there are more uh, event dispatchers available in symphony uh, as i talked about container aware event dispatcher similarly we have traceable event dispatcher that is basically uh, used to profile your events uh, listeners and subscribers and you also have an immutable event dispatcher let's look at container aware event dispatcher basically you have uh, the uh, container available to your container is uh, being injected as a dependency to your event dispatcher so you have uh, the you can leverage the power of services within your event listeners and within your uh, dispatchers making your uh, you know code more powerful and you also your uh, subscribers and listeners are lazy loaded whenever your events are being fired you do not have to explicitly instantiate those this is how you would uh, you know uh, work with a container aware event dispatcher you would have your container instantiated and then you would pass in uh, that as an argument to your container aware event dispatcher and then as a you know necessarily you would add your listeners and subscribers as services the same process uh, applies here as well with uh, listeners you would have need to pass in the extra information explicitly unlike uh, you would do with you know which you would not need to do with uh, subscribers traceable event dispatcher uses uh, symphony stopwatch component to profile your code 
and as a result uh, you know it has uh, two methods add get called listeners and get not called listeners so at the end of the propagation of an event you would have the information of what listeners have been called and what listeners have not been called this uh, event dispatcher has been exploited by web profiler and that is how it gets the information of you know what uh, events have been called and what listeners have been consequently called on those event events you also have immutable event dispatcher wherein you know you can uh, you know stop um, the process of you know you can stop other people from adding further listeners and further subscribers to your event dispatcher so uh, this uh, you would have your normal event dispatcher and then you would add certain uh, you know listeners and subscribers to your event dispatcher and then you would pass that event dispatcher as an argument to your immut immutable event dispatcher and then when you call uh, add listener on your immutable event dispatcher you would uh, get a bad method called exception so this is how you would do it you would have a normal event dispatcher and then you would pass in pass that as an argument to your immutable event dispatcher so that takes us to drupal 8 i mean how uh, we are doing events in drupal 8 the process remains uh, more or less the same so i have you know cut this a bit short events uh, in drupal 8 have been taken from symphony uh, they allow for different components to be you know able to interact with each other in a decoupled way we have you know we had earlier had a procedural hook system which is being you know slowly replaced by this object oriented way of interaction between you know core modules and other components this necessarily again implements the mediator pattern and we are using a container aware event dispatcher in drupal 8 uh, extensively uh, and will probably replace hooks in future drupal versions something to note here is that since we are using container aware event dispatcher we uh, you know uh, have to explicitly define our subscribers uh, as services but we are not supporting you know we, we are not yet supporting the uh, service definition way of adding listeners i think that has been done so as to keep a single way of do adding listeners to your uh, event dispatcher you do not want to confuse people with you know giving them multiple ways to add certain things so how this has been done is that we will take a look at that how you know later so the workflow remains the same thing you uh, get your dispatcher object from the service container you create an event you then dispatch that event in the same process you create tag service uh, tagged with event subscriber in services.yml and then you write a class for that impl which implements your event subscriber interface and then eventually implementing the get subscribed events method as well which returns the same array of events that you you want your application to listen to this is uh, from core config factory class how they have you know how core is subscribing to events basically uh, define your class and implement the get subscribed events method uh, define the array that array of events and corresponding you know method names with uh, corresponding priorities that you want you to listen to your events with uh, and then returning the same information and then you would obviously have the definition of these methods as well this is what services.yml would look like in core if you had a simpler you know implementation you would simply define this service uh, with a class and then argument whatever argument you want dependency injection container to inject in your class and then you would define it with a tag uh, event subscriber and then uh, this is how you would dispatch the event you would get the dispatcher object from your service container you would create the event and then you would dispatch it this is how core is registering event subscribers this is how you know this is where you get to know that you only if you uh, you know define your event listener as a service in drupal 8 it will not work why it will not work because it has not been there is no way that this uh, that your event listener would be added to this to your dispatcher we have a compiler pass interface we have a compiler pass implemented in drupal 8 that basically fetches all the tagged services that are tagged with event subscriber and then you know do, does some checks if they are implementing the event subscriber interface and then adding those info adding those uh, 
subscribers to your to your event dispatcher that is how uh, basically tag services work so events in drupal code uh, we have certain events that are same uh, you know because we are using symphony components that are same from uh, as what we can see in symphony we have controller event kernel events exception request response terminate and view uh, we have config events we have entity type events we have field storage definition events console and migrate events and other events so the path forward from here would be uh, uh, if you're writing your own module you have to trigger an event for everything you and exposing hooks is not advised anymore if you're interacting with or altering core you subscribe to an event if one is fired but if there is you know an a hook is uh, you know a hook has been exposed then you would eventually you know you don't have any option you would have to uh, implement that hook but then if you need configuration form if you need a uh, configuration and if you uh, you know want the support of admin ui you would be uh, using plugins and for other simple extensions you would be uh, using tag services so the summary of uh, you know uh, all of this would be that uh, to uh, use the event dispatcher component you would have to dispatch create the event first put in all information that you want others to alter in that event object pass that event object to the dispatcher and dispatch it and then uh, implement a subscriber uh, create a subscriber class define it as a service with uh, tagged with uh, event subscriber and you're good to go so that's all uh, a simple demo of uh, you know simple application using events so what we'd be doing is uh, i have a simple module here that would uh, basically uh, demonstrate uh, how you would do since you don't have hook in it hook exit and hook boot in drupal 8 how you would implement a hook in it implementation in drupal 8 using event subscribers so i have a subscriber a class written that is basically subscribing to kernel event request that happens you know this event is fired when a request is uh, received so i am uh, you know so defining a method custom redirection that should get called every time a request is made so in the uh, uh, in this custom redirection method i receive the get response event object this event is the ob this uh, object is the same event object that was passed in as an argument when this uh, you know kernel event request method was a uh, kernel event request event was fired or dispatched so i get the url from the uh, you know i get the url from the request that was requested and i if that is uh, you know about us dot html if that matches the url and then i'd be you know creating a new response and then sending the new response to the browser this is how that would be done and then you would define then you would uh, define this uh, subscriber as a service in your services dot yml file this is how that would look so first i would uh, i'll check if my module is enabled my module is enabled so if i visit the about us dot html page it should get redirected to about us page but if i uh, it would not get redacted i also have one more implementation so i have a i have a form rendered on this uh, you know route uh, the form looks like this it has basically three text fields i am uh, you know in the submit form i am getting those all uh, you know it's not possible to read that code from back here sorry sorry for that sorry 
So is that clear now? Thank you. Thank you. So you have basically in your form you have three text fields. Uh, in the submit form I get the value of these fields. I create an event there. I don't have to, I mean this is not an ideal implementation of events but then this is just to explain how you would do events. So I get these event, uh, get the value of from these text fields. I uh, get the dispatcher from the service container. I create an create a custom event, pass the config, the, you know, all the values that I got from these text fields to my custom event and then I dispatch this event. Uh, what my event uh, looks like, this is uh, what my event would look like, you know. It would, uh, whenever my event is created, it would take in the config object as an argument and the, I also have setters and getters for the config that I have set. So uh, get config would return my config and set config would set my config. So what I'm doing in the submit handler, in the submit function of this form is that uh, once I've dispatched this, once I've gotten the uh, values from the text fields, I am passing the same uh, information to the to my event and I'm dispatching it. The same information would be available in my event subscriber and then um, the control and then the same event object would be returned to my uh, you know submit form function and in that submit form function I can basically then get the same information if that has been altered I would be receiving new values and then I would be doing a merge and saving that config. So uh, I have another module subscribing to this event so that would look like this I have a subscriber defined as an event subscriber. I also have a subscriber class here. I have uh, the get subscribed events method is here. I am uh, listening to this uh, event that I have fired in the form submit form function of my another module. I have two methods listening to the same event with different priorities. So as per the priorities this method uh, pr with the priority of 100 would get called first and with the priority of 10 would get called second. So alter config again is here. I am changing the value of the video field to this text. This would get called first. So this would get called afterwards. I am changing the value again. So let's visit that form. So if I change the value, let me first click clear cache, I might be doing something like this. So I'm changing the value of the video field here. The value is uh, again the same because it was, you know, set here. So if I change the uh, priorities now, if I keep this with a priority 1000, so alter config would get called first and alter config again would get called second. So uh, since this would get called second, the value would change to this value. And whatever I am, uh, you know, giving, uh, whatever value I am giving from the UI would get overridden. that work. Alter config is with a thousand this would get called first alter config again would get called so I don't know why this one it should work. Sorry? <laughs> I think it's the live demo bug. Yeah, up on that. Sorry? <laughs> the live demo bug. <laughs> no, no, that's not. Does the larger number get executed second or first? 
the larger priority would get executed first. It's it's working now, so it was a cache issue. <laughs> so the this is this is a little bit from a uh, little bit different from what we see in Drupal generally uh, regarding the weights and stuff. Uh, so here, uh, the higher the priority, the you know first would it would get called, whichever listener has a higher priority would get called first. Let's get back to the presentation. So demo is done. Uh, are there any questions? So please join us for uh, contribution sprints. And please don't forget to uh, rate my session. I'd encourage you to do it here only. So that would really help me. And thank you. <laughs>